And last, but most certainly not the least, Haiti. My relationship with Haiti began when I first went to Haiti in 1973. And it's been a continual hardship, heartbreak in the devastation of this extraordinary, extraordinary, extraordinary people. Frederick Douglass said at the 1893 World's Fair in Chicago that we people of the world, particularly we people of African descent, whether we be in Latin America, whether we be in the Caribbean, whether we be on the continent itself, owe so much to the Haitian people for what they did. It was the first victory of Africans against the worldwide institution of slavery, the Haitian Revolution. The first victory at a time when there were simply 13 small colonies on the eastern seaboard that these extraordinary men and women waged really the most, I believe, one of the most important struggles in that period. If we look at the three revolutions at that time in that 15 year period, the American Revolution in 1776, the French Revolution in 1789, and the Haitian Revolution in 1791, we would have to understand clearly that the Haitian Revolution not only, not only ascribed to the values of those two previous unions, but they were the one revolution that actually actualized, that made the va those values real, that all men were created equal. <laughs> the earthquake in Haiti is the worst natural disaster in 200 years in the Western Hemisphere. Despite billions of dollars donated from around the world, hundreds of thousands of Haitians remain hungry, thirsty, and dying from treatable diseases. The relief efforts for most of the world's, from, uh, from most of the world's governments and mega corporate, corporate sized NGOs have tragically failed to meet the needs on the ground. The tragedy is heightened by the pending hurricane season and by the fact that the world's media has turned their cameras in other directions. I was just in Haiti with Nicole Lee, who had to leave the conference early we remember, I remember visiting Leogon, I, one of the epic centers of the, the earthquake. And we went to a group where there were more than 3,000 people living there. And began to talk with them. They, their encampment was opposite, opposite a church that had been totally devastated in that city. And they had begun taking statistics the day of the earthquake. How many men, how many women, how many children, how many elders, began taking those, a needs assessment that day, beginning to take that. And these are young people. We should be proud of those young people who have taken on considerable leadership in the face of this devastation in Haiti. They had Come, Nicole Lee had been there three weeks before and had spoken with them. They had taken this information on the January 12th. They had not seen, by the time Nicole had arrived, anyone from USAID. We had come now three weeks later, still with their statistics, vital statistics in hand, women who were, were about to give birth, all the information necessary to have a proper needs assessment. They're still in that three week period after Nicole had reported what she saw at a congressional hearing, they still not, had not seen anyone from USAID and by when we had come there. So in just one of the examples through the gross, the gross inadequacy of what is happening in that, in that season, in, in that situation. And we were shocked by the the level of the lack of relief. We were shocked by the gulf between the rhetoric and the deed. The mission has not been accomplished and we must tirelessly stand in solidarity with the Haitian people. We must stay and fight on, on the lines of these international battles. The 
people of Zimbabwe, Colombia, and Haiti are counting on our efforts 